Memories are the building blocks of our identity. They represent who we are and where we came from. It's not hard to see why people cherish their memories deeply. But how reliable actually are our memories? How much of what you remember is real and how much is an illusion? Many people believe that memory works like a recording device. You play it back to recall exactly what happened. And yet decades of research have shown that our recollections of the past are highly complex, easily influenced and full of errors. Memories do not exist in a vacuum, rather they are continually disrupted by each other and by external factors. Our memories, Professor Elizabeth Loftus argues, are more like a Wikipedia page, you can go change it, but so can other people. Through effective suggestion we can be made to remember things that never happened, or in less extreme cases change the details of things that really did happen. Our recollection of the past can affect not only our future decisions and opinions, but also more significant outcomes, such as court verdicts, when influenced by inaccurate eyewitness testimonies. Eyewitness testimony is often a powerful determinant of whether an accused person will be convicted by the jury. The effect is particularly strong if bystanders appear highly confident of their testimony. This is true even if they offer apparently conflicting responses. It has been estimated that as many as 10,000 people per year may be convicted wrongfully on the basis of mistaken eyewitness testimony. One of the most famous legal cases regarding this issue is the tragic story of Steve Titus. Back in 1980, the 31-year-old man had been out for dinner with his fiancée when the police pulled him over and arrested him because he sort of matched the physical description of and drove a similar car to a man who had raped a woman in the area. Looking at the photo lineup, the victim told the police that Titus looked the closest to the man who had raped her. But by the time the trial began, the victim had become absolutely certain that Titus was the attacker, so the man was convicted and taken away to jail. Titus was eventually found innocent after a journalist struck down the real rapist, but he lost faith in the justice system, lost his job and fiancé, and became obsessed with what had happened to him. He died of a stress-related heart attack at the age of 35. The important question here is, how did the victim go from that's the closest to I'm absolutely positive that's the guy? To find out, psychologists devised a series of experiments to see how easily people's recollections of events could be clouded by suggestion. In one study conducted by Loftus and Palmer, people were shown a simulated car accident and were asked how fast a car was going when it either hit or smashed into a second vehicle. Participants who were asked the smashed question thought the cars were going faster than those who were asked the hit question. When the word smashed was used, people not only overestimated the speed of the car, but also reported seeing broken glass at the accident site. Those results suggest that the framing of a question following an event can affect our recollection of it. Even seemingly slight changes, such as verb alterations, can create false memories. In fact, Loftus found in a later experiment that even the switching of a uh and the in a question, did you see a uh or the broken headlight, can influence respondents' recollection of an object. This phenomenon is called a misinformation effect and probably most of us have been influenced by it at some point. It is one thing to slightly change a detail to an otherwise intact memory, but it is quite another thing to plant an entire new memory for an event that actually never happened. Over the years, researchers have devised a number of techniques for planting whole events or what have been called rich false memories. One study used scenarios made up by relatives of subjects and planted false memories of being lost in a shopping mall at age 6 and rescued by an elderly person. Other studies used similar methods to plant a false memory that as a child the subject had an accident at a family wedding, had been a victim of a vicious animal attack and even about having tea with Prince Charles. Those results were so intriguing that marketers started wondering whether they can use autobiographical advertising to make people believe that they had experiences as children that are mentioned in the ads. In one study, participants were shown an ad for Disney which suggested that as children they shook hands with Mickey Mouse. Later on, they were asked questions about their childhood experiences at Disney. The results showed that the ad increased the confidence of the participants that as children they personally had shaken hands with Mickey. A question came up as to whether the ad caused the creation of a new false memory or retrieval of a true one, because some people could have actually met Mickey Mouse at Disney. So, researchers conducted another study in which people viewed the fake ad for Disney, which suggested that they shook hands with an impossible character, Bugs Bunny. As you might know, Bugs Bunny is a Warner Brothers character and would not be found at a Disney resort. Even in this situation, many participants were pretty sure that they have actually shaken hands with Bugs Bunny and what's even more interesting, they freely supplied details about this impossible experience such as remembering that Bugs Bunny said Hey, what's up, Doc? 
it seems that the brain is desperately trying to construct a coherent picture of what occurred. Shari Berkowitz and his colleagues tested this ideal even further. They tried to plant a false memory about having an unpleasant experience with another Disney character, Pluto. They succeeded with about 30% of the subjects. Moreover, those who were seduced by the suggestions did not want to pay as much for a Pluto souvenir. This finding shows that the false belief can have consequences that can affect later thoughts and behaviors. Many other studies have also indicated that false memories have repercussions. Researchers have shown that by planting false memories for food-related experiences, they can affect how much people like particular foods and how much they actually eat of it. They have succeeded with both negative false memories, getting sick from eating pickles or egg salad, and with positive false memories, having warm and fuzzy recollections related to asparagus. Those false memories not only influence people's preference for some foods, but also the amount of money they were willing to spend on it. So far, researchers have shown that planting false memories is no longer only a plot for a science fiction novel. But along with this opportunity comes some important ethical issues, like when should we use this mind technology, and should we ever ban its use? Could planting beneficial false memories be the next big thing for a wide variety of problems, from obesity to depression, or is it something that will rob us of our free will and authenticity? Those questions are yet to be answered. Now take a moment to remember an event that you experienced in your childhood. Pick something that's important to you, an event that really shaped your personality and made you the person you are today. Now ask yourself, are you sure this event truly happened? We will be happy to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining us. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel for a monthly dose of science. See you soon.